Cambridge class this week in English. We'll be looking at direct speech and dialogue. So when we have direct speech, we have inverted commas, which look like this. Can you remember any rules for using inverted commas for direct speech? Have a quick think. So the first rule is that all spoken words must be enclosed by inverted commas and we tend to have two, so a pair of inverted commas at the beginning of the speech and a pair at the end. The second rule is that punctuation needs to go inside the inverted commas and you have a comma, a full stop, a question mark or an exclamation mark inside the inverted commas. For example, we've got a comma here an exclamation mark here, a question mark here, and the inverted commas are always after that. So this is wrong because we've got get off my bridge, inverted commas, exclamation mark, but the exclamation mark should be inside the inverted commas. Rule number three is that when you haven't got a question mark or an exclamation mark, you must have a comma. And we're not asking questions and we're not shouting, the character is moaning and the character is muttering. So we need to get to the, to the other side, comma. Those goats are always disturbing my sleep, comma. The role that we're going to have a look at today is to punctuate correctly where the speech is before the verb. So as an example, we have got Tom the cat and Jerry the mouse and Tom is catching Jerry as always. Jerry is saying, you can't get away from me. And we've got an exclamation mark because he's shouting it. We're going to write, using inverted commas, what that sentence would look like. But to add a little bit of interest, we're going to add some action to these sentences too. So I'm going to write down the speech before I'm saying who has said it. I'm going to be doing that all today. So inverted commas to start with, capital letter, you can't get away from me. We need the punctuation inside the inverted commas, so exclamation mark, close the inverted commas, and I'm going to say who's spoken, how they've said it, and what they are doing at that time. So you can't get away from me, shouted Jerry. And what is he doing? He is sprinting away, shouted Jerry, as he, I'm going to say scurried, because that's what a mouse would do, as he scurried away from his enemy. Full stop at the end. So you can't get away from me, exclamation mark, close inverted commas, shouted Jerry as he scurried away from his enemy. So the most important thing is that I remember my inverted commas, capital letter, punctuation before the inverted commas close, and then a full stop at the end. Let's have a look at this picture. So here we've got George Pig and Peppa Pig. And Peppa Pig is saying, I love jumping up and down in muddy puddles. They're the words that she's spoken. So you need to write down the spoken words at the beginning of the sentence. Say who has spoken and say any actions that they're doing. So because it's not a question mark or an exclamation mark here, I will just have a comma before I close my inverted commas. Pause the video while you have a go at this sentence. So my first task is to open the inverted commas, write my sentence. I love jumping up and down in muddy puddles. So it's not a shouting, it's not a question. I need a comma, close inverted commas and say who said it and how they've said it. I love jumping up and down in muddy puddles. Um, said Peppa Pig as she got, as she became dirtier by the second. And then a full stop at the very end. The next sentence, we have got Ben and Holly, and this is normally a red ladybird, and he's called Gaston. So Ben is saying, 
what on earth has happened to Gaston? And that's a question mark. So again, we're going to have the spoken word at the beginning of the sentence. And at the end, say who has said it and how they've said it. Pause the video while you have a go at this. So I need to remember my inverted commas at the beginning, capital letter. What on earth has happened to Gaston? It's a question, so we need a question mark, close inverted commas, and then say who said it and how they've said it. So I'm going to say, what on earth has happened to Gaston? Said Ben. Shocked. Or I could have said Ben with his mouth wide open. Okay, so today we're going to be having a look at the video clip saw and this week we'll be doing some work on this. At various points in the film we will think about what the characters might say to each other and I'd like you to watch the film all the way through to start with.
Okay, so the story begins with a young girl called Mara, a 13-year-old who dreams of one day becoming an airplane designer. But every day, she test flies her model aeroplanes in the fields behind her house, and every day they crash. Perhaps the saying, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again, is her motto. One day, after yet another unsuccessful flying attempt, Mara sits gloomily at a picnic table, trying to come up with new ideas. Suddenly, inspiration hits her on the head, literally. A tiny five-inch tall boy and his fantastical flying machine drop out of the sky. She realises that he is in trouble, his flying ship is broken and the rest of his fleet is leaving without him. Now Mara must use every ounce of inspiration she has to fly her new friend back home before it's too late. So having a look at this part of the film, write down one thing the tiny boy might say to Mara at this point in the film. Use direct speech and all the correct speech punctuation. You need to put the speech before the verb like you've just been practicing and use action too. So pause the video while you write your sentence. So at this point in the film, the boy has just spotted Mara and he looks a little bit shocked by her size perhaps. So my sentence is going to be along the lines of how big she is. So I need to put the spoken words first. I'm gonna put my inverted commas and then say, Wow, exclamation mark, you are so big, exclamation mark. Close inverted commas, said the tiny boy with his mouth wide open. Wow, you are so big, said the tiny boy with his mouth wide open. So I've got my inverted commas, my exclamation marks, close my inverted commas after the spoken words and then who said it and then any other actions after that. Let's look at the next one. So here, what might Mara say back to the boy? Again, remember all of the relevant speech punctuation and action. So here she's going to be just as shocked to see him as he is to see her. So my sentence is going to be similar to that. Pause the video while you write yours. So I'm going to have inverted commas and I'm going to say, I can't believe how small you are. And I'm going to have an exclamation mark. I can't believe how small you are. Where have you come from? So I need an a question mark here and then close inverted commas afterwards. I can't believe how small you are. Where have you come from? Questioned Mara. Full stop. So we don't always want action. We need to pick and choose so it's not always repetitive. So hopefully your sentence includes inverted commas, a capital letter to start your speech and then a question mark, an exclamation mark or a comma before you close your inverted commas and then who said it and perhaps how they said it and any action. Your final challenge today is to have a go at this. Identify the mistakes in the punctuation and rewrite the sentence correctly below. So we've got how much flour do I need to make this cake? Close inverted commas question mark asked Julie question mark and then Inverted commas, small w, we need to bring a pat lunch and a change of clothes, comma, don't we? Close inverted commas, ask James, full stop. So pause the video while you rewrite the sentences correctly. So thinking about what Julie actually says, she says, how much flour do I need to make this cake? So I need my inverted commas first, capital letter. How much flour do I need to make this cake? And my question mark goes inside the inverted commas, so close inverted commas, asked Julie, full stop. How much flour do I need to make this cake? Question mark, close inverted commas, asked Julie, full stop. And the next one, I need inverted commas, but then a capital W. We need to bring a 
packed lunch and a change of clothes. The comma's fine there. Don't weep. I need a question mark. Close inverted commas. Asked James. And then a full stop at the end. See you tomorrow where we'll look a little bit deeper into this video. See you later.